Hello everyone and welcome to another Marvel Crisis Protocol themed unboxing. The numbers for these releases are all over the place. We have CP51, the Sentinels, MK4s. We have CP160, which is just bizarre, Sentinel Prime. And then we have CP74, the New Red Skull and associated Hydra Troopers slash Hired Goons. Now I did mention in uh, some battle reports recently, wasn't planning on getting the Sentinels just too expensive. I managed to find a pretty good deal on the lot in the UK and I couldn't find better. So given that there doesn't seem to be anything else releasing between now and maybe January or February for Crisis Protocol, um, not counting the scenery piece that's coming with a new Wolverine and Sabretooth that I'm not interested in, spreading it out across those number of months that doesn't make it so bad. I managed to pick up all three of these for £120 in total, including postage, which is pretty decent. Uh, I did ask in my Discord, could anyone find it cheaper than that? Couldn't, so I thought, you know, that's a good enough deal, and this will cover me over Christmas, because it's some big projects, because these are not small miniatures. They are very large. Usually I like going in the CP order. We can't really do that this time. Well, let's cover Red Hood and his Hydra Troopers first. There's a new Hydra leader to go along with Baron Strucker. Then we'll handle the big boys after that and talk about the Sentinels. So this new Red Skull, I think he's absorbed the Cosmic Cube. This is a suit he's wearing that's been designed by AMG. I remember them talking about it on the reveal stream, saying they were very happy that Marvel approved it. And of course, it comes with just some of the generic Hydra Troopers that look like Bob, of course. We shall never be destroyed. And although I think that Baron Strucker remains the better option as a leader for Hydra, this one definitely offers you a, well, more thematically apt, I guess, if you're really into Red Skull. But he's very, very power focused. He just wants to dominate in the power game, in the controlling objective game, and all that good stuff, and that's very, very thematic. As per usual, yeah, waste of paper, but the assembly instructions are long since available on their website, tomassgamescom slash docs. Don't need to scan the QR code if you don't want to. We have our safety cardboard, of course, let's put that to one side. Let's take a look at the sprue before we get onto the cards. The bases are in here as well. So this Red Skull, other than not being associated with the Cabal directly, comes on the larger base. So you get your two choices of those. Uh, actually, oh, so actually you don't get a choice, you have to use both you're given because the Hydro Troopers are also on that size of base. And this is the Red Skull's sprue right here, hopefully in focus. That's the rock he's kind of standing on. Is it like a shield related thing? Doesn't look like it. There's the, the lightning that's arcing from his hands. So you might need to be careful with how you assemble those, they're a bit thin. Other than that, the rest of them looks fine in terms of assembly, like you're not really needing the instructions. The gauntlets are separate pieces right there, and his head is a separate piece down here as well. And he's doing a maniacal laugh. Hydro Troopers have got a lot more smaller bits, but look pretty basic. And they aren't lettered and numbered. So if you're following the instructions, you'll know which piece is which. That's the crates the guy at the back is standing on. He's got a, I think it's a shotgun. Other guy's got two pistols and then the other one's holding like a rifle. So unlike the shield ones, you could put all of them on the base and still be fine. Doesn't look weird that one's hanging from a rope that doesn't exist. So sure. And as I say, Bob can go along with them as well. Even if you modeled them with the chef's hat. All right, let me safely get the cardboard out or the paper out of here and we'll look at it. So you do actually get a uh hefty amount of cards in this pack. So we have a Sleeper Agent, that's the Agent of Hydra uh, version of Captain America. Inevitable Betrayal, I remember this card, it's fun. World Domination, I think that's Captain America again, isn't it? Two More Shall Rise, Sin there. Endless Legions, Occult Research, and Victory Assured. So there is a lot of cards. I actually get some more Hydra symbols. Some of those came in the core box, even though he's Cabal in the core box. And I don't know what that token is for. Because you would just use those for objectives. Maybe it's related to his abilities. I guess we'll see. So apologies if you hear a dog crying in the background every so often. She's very impatient. So Victory Assured is Johan Schmidt. Can suffer up to five damage play this card. He can use the attacks shown above once. Beam three, six dice. If this attack daisies or kills the target, it doesn't. Actually, hang on. If this attack daisies or kills the target character, oh right, if he manages to daze or kill someone, he gets stunned. We're making this attack add dice equal to the damage received. So it could go up to 11 dice. 
That's why it's called Victory Assured. He goes all out to try and win the day. The art on the card is great. <laughs> Occult Research is a Hydra active. During the power phase, Red Skull Master of Hydra, which is this one's title, can spend 10 to play this card. Wow. He and all characters within two gain a stagger token. Red Skull Master of Hydra gains the following superpower for the rest of the game. He gets an extra action, so he can do three things per turn. It's a hefty price, obviously, but still pretty fun, because he can generate power quick. Reactive for Hydra with Endless Legions. During the power phase, Red Skull can play this card. Each time an allied Hydra trooper would be killed this round, remove all damage from them, they're not killed, then an opposing player pushes them small instead. So that's just the two more shall take his place type thing. Even though this is the card called Two More Shall Rise, when an allied Hydra character with an active leadership ability is KO'd, another allied character can play this card. Choose two allied characters with the Hydra or Cabal leadership abilities. Both chosen character leadership abilities become active. That is an interesting one. So you're active, so basically if Strucker goes down, you could have Red Skull take the leadership with, say, Sins, for instance, or if uh, Red Skull goes down, you could have Baron Strucker with Sin. Interesting. If you control all secure objectives, you can play this card. You gain 1 VP for every 2 secure objective tokens you are securing. Additionally, each character you control gains 1 power for every 2 secure objectives you are securing. <laughs> World Domination. Okay. Very doable depending on your setup. Then we have Inevitable Betrayal. During the cleanup phase, before victory points are scored, you can spend 8 to play this. Choose an enemy character within 2 that's contesting a secure. They count as one of yours for the turn. I, I love the, the thematics of that card. Your Inevitable Betrayal. <laughs> and then Sleep Agent. I remember this card being a little bit complicated, so I'm bringing it around here to read it easier. But not being super great. It's a reactive. When you include this card in your squad, choose one non Hydra affiliated character in your squad. It's now Hydra affiliated. If your squad is using Hydra and the uh, chosen character is deployed, it gains the subterfuge superpower. We'll get to it in a second. Each time this character attacks after the attack is resolved, if the attack target was not dazed or KO'd, he loses the subterfuge. After all characters deployed, discard the team tactic card. So the subterfuge, fuge. During this activation, enemy characters cannot use active superpowers and cannot play reactive team tactics cards. It's a fun card. The art on it is great, but practicality of it, not so much. Not so much. It's a shame. So finally for this box, we have the Hydra Troopers Hired Goon card. Oh, sorry for it being reflective there. There's the back of the card. 3 health, move small, size 2, 1, 2, 2 defense. Hydra Energy Weapons, basically the same as the Shield Pistols. I think it might be one range longer though. Hydra Assault, action. This character makes a move. During its next attack action, this character can reroll any number of its attack dice. After it's resolved, the character is KO'd. They go all out. Occupation Force. This character cannot pick up, hold, or interact with Extracts. This character does not have to pay power to interact with Secures, however. And they're Grunts of Red Skull, Master of Hydra only. No other options. He has to be the one to bring the goons. And then, we have Johann Schmidt's card, entirely new in the new style. 422 defense, 7 health, wow. 5 threat. The one in the core box is 4, I think, the Cabal leader. Medium move, he's got Blitz Strike, range 3, 6 dice. He gains 1 power for resolving. If he gets the hit in a wild, he gets Blitz. Shield in a wild is push, self explanatory, size 3 or less. Blitz though is after attacks resolved he can advance small. Kneel before me, 5 power, range 2, 9 dice though. Before choosing a target, this character chooses the attack type between energy and physical, uh, sorry, energy and mystic rather. Throw in a wild, size 4 or less, so it's a, it's a massive blast. Now this is his uh, affiliation bonus for Hydra. During the power phase, allied characters gain 1 power if they're holding or contesting an objective token. That means that in general you're going to get a lot more power across your entire affiliation because it's on top of the power phase obviously you could be playing oh, any number of them that give power like the infinity formulas so it's real easy to build up power with this guy although again I still prefer Struckers personally because it's more nuanced I feel but this is just pure power gain. Empowered Gauntlets, 2 power during the next Blitz Strike which is his basic attack you can add blanks to your successes. 
Oh, consuming obsession. This character suffers one damage to gain two power. Can only be used once per turn, but does not count as an action. So it's kind of like a better version of tapping the cube. Well, you get one guaranteed damage and it's one less power, but it's not an action, and that's important. Leviathan armor. During the power phase, you have to choose a shielding type. This is kind of similar to vision changing densities. So you can have a dispersion field to add three dice against energy and cannot be pushed or advanced by Mystic, which would put him at five energy. Or you can have three against Mystic, which puts him at five Mystic, which is why he's 422. And also doesn't suffer collision damage on the null field. Cut off one head. If an allied Hydro Trooper is not in play when this character is chosen to activate, place them in play within one. They gain a stagger token and are part of your squad. He doesn't have as many ways to take them back or bring them back, which is why there's that Endless Legions card, I feel. Again, I do it every time. It's not that way, it's this way. So he goes down one health on his other side. The art looks better, it's a shame the new card design doesn't really let you see it as much. I believe everything else stays the same. If not, the card is before you, so you can study it for yourself. But yeah, he's by, he, he seems really good. It's just struck her with the Armin Zola team up. It's, it's so powerful. I'm not sure how he'll do by comparison, even if you include that the grunts are obviously included in his price. I don't know, that will need tested, but that's the fun of it, I guess. So let me get this cleaned up and we'll move on to the big boys. So let's start with the MK4 Sentinels, you get two of them in this box, the Sentinels plus the Sentinel Prime are an affiliation. I think they come to 14 or 15 threat it was, but uh, Cassandra Nova is already affiliated with them due to comic book reasons as far as I'm aware. I'm only familiar with these guys from the 90s uh, X-Men cartoon, they were the constant villains in that so that's really all I'm used to. I can hear their, the voices they had in that cartoon in my head, they had a very distinct voice. And these are big. Uh, we have a running joke, my friends and I, that we measure everything in this game in hulks because Hulk was the first big miniature for the game. These two are roughly two hulks high, putting them on par with like Dormammu, I think, or just below Dormammu. And then the Sentinel Prime, he is huge. He's like two and a half hulks. It's unbelievable. So that's why they come in these big boxes. And the other thing that AMG were kind of touting for these guys is they are highly customizable. They can be battle damaged. They're uh, I think their arms at the very least are on ball joints, so you can pose them however you like. Maybe the legs, I'm not 100% sure. It does also mean that it's very important that you check the assembly instructions for them, however, because of the options. You also apparently get, like my friend had these a little while ago, you apparently get enough to build a third Sentinel, almost. If you get some like third party legs, you could actually build a third one. You can only ever bring two in a list, but if you just wanted another one, or maybe just do a battle damage one for scenery, you could do it. So we got one hefty bag of sprue here. Look at all those different fist options there. Let me just open this real quick. We'll get to this. Oh, actually, no, let's first check. Of course, there won't be assembly instructions. You know, in this instance, this might be the first acceptable one because if there is a huge amount of options, it makes sense that they'll do it digitally rather than do like three pages worth of options. All right, let's open this. Here we go. Pardon me. There we go. So, they come with two default options for the large size base, however they do come with unique bits of scenery on their feet that you can just kind of make out there, there, so you're going to be covering most of this anyway. They've got two identical ones with the coffee cups and the bottles of whatever, pop, booze. So there's one bit of sprue with an assortment of legs and also the scenery they're standing on which is a smashed car. Oh, it's actually just like stepped into it, it's kind of cool. And then just some rubble as well. And then this, what is this? An assortment of upper arms, a chest, a bunch of different hands. Do you want them like fist? Do you want them open so they're like shooting a, a blast? Or I guess they, um, they have the restraint coils as well. And then you've got similar. Actually, it might be identical. Hang on. Yeah, it's identical. So that's one sentinel, another sentinel, you choose out of these lot the options for them. Okay, we've got one bit of massive bit of safety cardboard, and now not much in here, but let me get them open. Alright, here we are, Sentinels Online. So again, the Prime is the affiliation leader, so that these don't have anything like that. But we have Scrap Metal, Cassandra Nova on the card there, Efficient Machines, and Directive One, hunting all the mutants. So let's do those in opposite order then. 
Reactive for the Sentinels. During the power phase, allied Sentinel characters may each spend one. If at least two power was spent this way, you may play this card. Until the end of the round, enemy characters do not benefit from stealth, cannot reroll re or modify defense dice, and allied characters do not require line of sight to target enemies with attacks. Wow. That's pretty good. Efficient Machines. Cassandra Nova can spend three to play, play this card in the power phase. Until the end of the round, allied Sentinel characters within three of Cassandra Nova treat... What is that? Treat shield results as wilds. Interesting. That's probably related to their attacks. Or their passives, rather. And then Sentinels, when an ally character with the Sentinel programming superpower would be KO'd and they spend two to play this card, roll five dice for each hit wild and... Uh, crit, sorry. Hit crit wild. All other characters within two of that character that played this card suffer one damage. Additionally, all other characters within two of the character that played this card gain stun. So the robot explodes, basically. Yeah, okay, I get it. She's like, she's ripping one apart. I'm just pulling it to the side here to see it better. Neat. She's got a lot of death machines. I'm not that familiar with Cassandra Nova. So you do get two cards. They are identical, because the Sentinels are identical, obviously. So you get two of them. Luckily, I, I thought they may cheap out and only give you one, honestly. So MK4 Sentinel, 3-4-4 four, four defense, 7 health, 4 threat, so that puts them at 8 so far. Size 5, and they move small, but they're on a Hulk size base. Plasma Blast, range 3, 4 dice, you get power equal to the damage dealt. When you attack, during the pay power cost, you can do up to 3 more, so you can get up to 7. Suppression Protocols, range 3, 8 dice, physical, for 3 power. If you get a wild, it does suppression, for each wild in this roll, you can inflict shock, incinerate, or slow. So that's a good way to give it status effects. That would mean they'd work quite well as their spender, though. They could work well with Hydra, maybe. Restraint cables for two. Choose an enemy character within four in line of sight. Unless you play that tactics card, of course. It's pushed towards this character small. Master mode. When building a roster or squad, you can include two of these instead of one. Power matrix. At the end of the character's activation, it gains two power. So not in the power phase, once it's activated, which is quite interesting. Sentinel programming. This character can be cannot be advanced or pushed by mystic superpowers. When defending against mystic powers, add wilds, or wilds count as two. They can fly, they can't bleed, they can't be poisoned. They are machines. Seven health goes down to six. And they actually change quite a bit on their flip side. So does the prime. They become uh, vo volatile, I guess is the, the thing to say. Their basic attack becomes a plasma leak. When rolling additional dice for crit results in this attack, roll two instead of one. But after the attack is resolved, you take one damage for each crit. So they, they start killing themselves as they melt. I think suppression protocols is exactly the same. Restraint cables is the same, but damage power matrix, they go down to one power at the end of their activation instead of two. Then they have, I think the rest is actually the same for them. Yeah, I think the prime changes more significantly on his wounded side. On that note, that is all you get in the Sentinels. They are very, very large lads, but their boss is even bigger. And here we have the Sentinel Prime. That's one we're looking at today. Systems Online Target Acquired. There is the blurb, slightly shiny, but there is the blurb if you want to read it. CP160. I can't imagine they would have planned this release, like the boss of this affiliation releasing so late after the grunts. That, that seems so weird to me. But anyway, safety cardboard, get that out of here. Pointless bit of paper, get that out of here. And then we have the sprue. So he also comes on the Hulk size base, as I understand it. It's just he's more upwardly tall than the other two. Yeah, exactly the same one as well. But he also comes with some scenery that he is standing on, which we can see here. What's he standing on? It looks like just generic rubble for him. Yeah, I think it is. Oh yeah, there's the ball joints as well. So you can position the, you can probably it's probably just the hands, right? Because the legs kind of have to be where they are because there's one of the foot markers there. Yeah, so it's probably just the hands you kind of have control over and then whether or not he's battle damaged. Same with the other two. Speaking of which, oh yeah, you can easily see the difference there. Battle damaged torso, not battle damaged torso. So it depends how beat up you want to look. I, I think I'll probably just do them like fresh looking since they're new, but there is options. Uh, I don't know if it just applies to the chest or the legs as well. Do any of those legs look damaged? Not really. Looks more so... Oh, I think the face is the other thing that can be damaged, actually. 
Speaking of which, where are their faces? <laughs> There's a damaged thing there. But I don't see their face. I'm sure it's here somewhere. <laughs> I'm just looking past it. Let's move on to his cards. So I've looked at the cards, but real quick, I did find his face. His two face options are there, and one of them is indeed battle damaged. Anywho, so we've got ourselves... Well, that is not an affiliation marker. It's some kind of cell. Oh, is that like the mutant gene, perhaps? And then just some basic stats effects, because they haven't added any <laughs> of those in for a while. We have our... Oh, they've changed how this looks, I guess, to make room for more text for future ones. But the Sentinels, you have the Prime, you have Cassandra Nova, you have the normal ones. That's it. As far as I'm aware, there's no one else with them. Under your skin, Cassandra Nova controlling... Uh, oh, I'm blanking the guy's name. An online and operational. He looks like a Transformer. Let's read that one first. Sentinel Prime can pay 8 to play this. Choose an allied injured Sentinel MK4 within 3. The chosen character removes all damage, all special conditions, and flips to his healthy side. Super good. And kind of necessary from what I've seen. Under your skin, when this is included in your squad, choose one non-Sentinel affiliated character. They are now affiliated, because Cassandra's controlling them, I guess. Discard it, and then the character with the Nanite token... Oh, that's what that is, Nanites. Gains flight and immunity to bleed poison superpowers. Okay. So you give them that. They can suddenly fly and are immune to poison and bleed. That's pretty cool. So the big boss, Robit himself. See this in view here. 3-4-4 four, four defense, 10 health on his healthy side. 5 threat, so that puts it at 13, was it? Because it was 8 for the other two. Size 5. Moves small. He's got Plasma Blast MK2, so it's slightly stronger, but otherwise the same. Suppression Protocol is MK2. It's slightly stronger, but it costs one more power. Still does suppression as well. Now, his affiliation bonus. When an enemy character is dazed, after it's resolved, choose number of ally characters up to the dazed character's threat value. Each of them gain one power, and you can't gain more than one. So, not quite as good version of the... Um, who is it? I'm blanking on the affiliation that has the when you kill a target you can heal someone and move someone, etc. Which is in turn is the opposite of Sam's leadership. I'm blanking on it. Nope, can't remember. But either way, that's his affiliation bonus. He's got restraint cables for two, it's the same as the others. Pattern analysis. When this character or an ally character within four is attacking or defending, you can spend up to three to use the superpower for each power spent. You can reroll one die. Power Matrix, same as the other two. At the end of his activation, he gains two power. Sentinel Programming, this character cannot be... Oh, that's the same. Yeah. So Wilds count as two successes when blocking against Mystic. And they can't be advanced or pushed, because they are robots. So he goes down by two max health on his wounded side. He keeps the Plasma Blast the same, I think. Hang on. Yep. Suppression Protocols stay the same. He still gets Pattern Analysis, yeah, but then he gets Overloading Power Core. During the Power Phase, roll 5 dice for each crit and hit rolled. The icons are so small. This character gains 1 power, and if at least 1 skull was rolled, you suffer 1 damage. Sentinel Programming is the same. I could have sworn something else was different on his Wounded side other than that. No, so it's just... Well, I guess it changes from after his activation to during the power phase. But, I could have sworn there was something else. But I can't see it at a glance. But either way, if you want to read it for yourself, there it is. If you can spot what it was that I'm missing, other than his health, obviously, which I did point out. But that is the Prime. So bringing all three of them is super cheap. <coughs> 14, and then you could stick in Cassandra Nova as an expensive option, get them to 19. I think she's 5 threat, I might be misremembering. But, either way... Pretty powerful, very large, so even though they're all small movement, they've got those like two inch thick or long bases, so they move pretty far and they're imposing. I, I don't know how successful they've been, I haven't seen much of them uh, going around, so I don't think they're very uh, at the top end of, of like, you know, the best strats, but it doesn't matter, they look cool, <laughs> that's all that matters really. So that is going to do it for this unboxing of Sentinel Prime, the Sentinels, and also the true leader of Hydra, the new version of Red Skull. 
Uh, there wasn't a, an ultimate encounter. Oh, can't pick up the ball. There was an ultimate encounter uh, that adds a Hydra tank as an ultimate encounter. You can have Red Skull sticking out of it. You can just use it for Hydra themed scenery as well. Didn't bother with that. And as I say, the next release for Crisis Protocol is a chunk of plastic scenery for a Weapon X bunker that comes with Wolverine and Sabretooth. They have new cards and a new affiliation bonus. It's a bit scummy that they're doing it that way, to be honest. I think it's a test to see if they can get away with it, and I would encourage you not to buy it as a result. Just print off the cards and use third-party sculpts in that instance. Or the old Sabretooth and Wolverine models if you wanted. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. Please do consider showing your support if you want to see more in the future by pressing the thanks button or becoming a channel member. It all helps out and is reinvested in the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta for now.